CCX News artwork that does more than put a face on a serious condition. So this is giving everyone a voice. Then, remembering a former school superintendent who spent three decades in education. But first, a commuter's update as more freeway ramps and lanes are scheduled to close. CCX News starts right now. Hello everyone and thanks for joining us. The I-94 road project in Brooklyn Center in Minneapolis is heating up. The delays are more common and drivers should know that they will only increase. We get more from Eric Nelson. I uh, firmly believe in what they're doing with the infrastructure in reworking I-94. I think it's long overdue. The countless orange barrels on I-94 are not exactly barrels of fun. They are symbols of MnDOT's $46 million project in Brooklyn Center in Minneapolis that will fix nine miles of pavement and 50 bridges. The road work is now kicking into high gear. Don't get angry. Don't start doing road rage or any of those things. There's nothing we can do about it. Minnesota's Main Street will have multiple lanes closed as I-94 undergoes a major makeover. Rush hour traffic was reduced to a crawl this morning. This will be the new normal for spring and summer commutes. On Thursday, the potential for gridlock will escalate as I-94's eastbound ramp to I-694 East and State Highway 252 will close. 252 is going to be a problem. I mean, it's going to be a mess. MnDOT knows it, we know it. This will put more cars on the streets of Brooklyn Center as drivers look for alternate routes. We're just expecting traffic to queue up horrendously on all those side streets and roads without 252 there. Brooklyn Center officials expect to see cut through traffic on Brooklyn Boulevard, Humboldt Avenue and other city streets. There's no escaping the fact that construction is ramping up on this I-94-694 project. In fact, the Shingle Creek exit ramp behind me will be closed starting on Tuesday. In Brooklyn Center, I'm Eric Nelson, CCX News. MnDOT is holding an I-94 open house on Thursday night from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Urban League in Minneapolis. And traffic on Highway 252 in Brooklyn Park is getting a close look at this week. An engineering consulting company is measuring the traffic count during the first part of the week. They also have cameras set up to study intersections along 252. Six of those intersections along the busy highway are among the top 20 busiest in Minnesota. They also have some of the highest crash costs in the state. Studies could lead to upgrading the highway to freeway standards. The Brooklyn Center community is mourning the death of a longtime educator. 82-year-old Douglas Rossi died yesterday after a long battle with Alzheimer's disease. He worked in the Brooklyn Center and Osseo School Districts where he wore many hats. During his 37-year career, he was a teacher, principal, and superintendent. The Brooklyn Center High School Auditorium is named after him. Friends say they will miss the man who taught valuable lessons to many. He always treated everybody with respect and, um, you know, having been a teacher, I think, uh, you know, he's kind of understood and had empathy for all the people that were, you know, in the trenches working with kids. Douglas Rossi's funeral service will be held on Thursday, April 6th at Lutheran Church of the Master in Brooklyn Center. The service starts at 11 a.m. There is a scam out there that police have seen before, but now it apparently has a new twist. Just as you're preparing your tax return, scammers are on the phone pretending to be the IRS and demanding money. They often con victims into sending cash or a prepaid debit card. Lately, they've even impersonated a local police chief. In this case, what they said is there'll be a follow-up phone call from the local police chief to validate that we are truly calling from the IRS. And sure enough, a few minutes later, somebody calls uh, impersonating me as the police chief um, and, you know, sort of falsely validating that this is a legitimate issue and that they need to comply to prevent further consequences. The Plymouth police say they never call residents to collect money. The IRS doesn't do that either. And if you get such a call, don't fall for it. If you get a call from the Internal Revenue Service, another financial institution, claiming that you owe them something, hang up because it's not legitimate. That is not the way financial institutions communicate with their customers. 
Uh, Chief Goldstein says once the money is gone, it is very hard to track down. New Hope police say despite concentrated air and water searches, they still don't know any more about the disappearance of 22-year-old Adam Clark. The New Hope man went missing in late February near the Ford Parkway Bridge in Minneapolis where his car was found. Over the weekend, volunteers searched the park and the riverbanks. Detectives and the Water Patrol have also searched by boat without finding anything. Another search is planned for next weekend by a volunteer group called the Hardy Hikers of Minnesota. Coming up, starting a brand new business from the ground up is not easy, but we'll check in on two local efforts to do just that. And then later in sports, highlights from the Great Eight All-Star Boys Hockey Tournament. But first, your AccuWeather forecast. It is often called the invisible injury, but when trauma impacts the brain, it can cause major changes in someone's life. As Delane Cleveland reports, an art exhibit this past weekend in Brooklyn Center is telling those stories. Every mask here is different, every story is different, and I think that's the main thing I like that people understand. Every person has a story. I had emotional problems. I would cry sometimes for no reason. Yet for anyone with a traumatic brain injury, it's just very, very emotional. They deal with an internal struggle that can't be seen with the naked eye. So this is giving everyone a voice. Saturday at the Earl Brown Heritage Center, an exhibit organized by the Minnesota Brain Injury Alliance showcased a thousand masks, each one offering a unique perspective on life with a brain injury. It's really haunting even to look at some of these faces that look and right back at us right now. So I hope people would just come and realize, one, it's very, very common and that everyone is different. John Casey is a retired police officer who was struck in the head 20 years ago by a man holding a steel table leg. Blew a hole in the side of my head about the side of a silver dollar fracturing my skull and four plate four pieces of my skull broke off one was driven into my brain so I hope people just look at my mask and realize here's a, a cop who got hurt on the, in the line of duty at seven years old a uh, 600 plus pound tractor tire fell over into me then there are the masks designed by Amber Rose Kordiak which highlight a painful story and the rim cut into my face cutting it it, in half. it was an accident that almost killed her. You first go into shock when you see you don't recognize a face. On top of her physical injuries, she also suffered a brain injury in the incident. Every day she wakes up, she feels like there's just weight pressing down on her. Her masks convey her struggles. It totally rips her life apart. Along with the hope she and her family have for the future. She has inspired me and hundreds of other people to take life face on and feel the sunshine and the birds singing and not listen to the storms and the rain. In Brooklyn Center, I am more than proud of her. Delaney Cleveland, CCX News. This is the first time that all 1,000 masks have been brought together for one exhibit. Well, we are shining the spotlight on two new businesses up and running in the Northwest Metro. And both businesses are primarily for women. And in this week's Business Matters, we learn that they're all about boosting confidence. We only use a teeny dab of glue. It's fitting we find Sheila Johnson working on Kristen Haunt's eyelash extensions because that's how these two women first met. Sheila was lashing at a studio and had a really great career going for her. I was in the corporate world and, you know, I just had that dissatisfaction of um, not doing what I was passionate about. The two women combined their talents and chic lash and glow studio was born in downtown Osseo. I think for most women it's the feeling of waking up and feeling great and not having to take the extra 15 minutes to put on mascara. This new business offers custom airbrush spray tans with a solution that's plant derived and the business offers eyelash extensions using synthetic and cruelty free mink lashes. You dip a teeny bit into the glue and then you attach to the lash. The lash extensions range in price from $50 to $190 for a full blended set of mega volume lashes. Well, I have on the clusters, um, which are just the temporary three to five days. Um, and these are a little more natural looking than what Kristen has. Kristen likes the glam look and she has ever since day one. And I thought it was gonna be a treat yourself kind of movement. It was gonna be a one-time thing for me, but once I had them on, I was like, nope, I'm coming back. And three years later, 
I still have them. A new line of women's activewear is how Leah Leopold is choosing to fight bullying. I had a hard time in high school, was bullied for about two years pretty relentlessly, and I, I know what it feels like. The Plymouth mom and her husband Brian recently had a launch party for their Zuma Blue clothing. It's a line of women's activewear sold online and named in honor of their favorite Southern California beach. Nothing is, is too wild or scary, but it's, it's things that are going to make you feel very comfortable and confident. 10% of all annual Zuma Blue profits will benefit bullying prevention charities. Coming up, we will show you where there's some serious spring cleaning underway. But first in sports, get in on the high-flying action as local standouts compete at the Minnesota All-Stars Boys Basketball Series. John Jacobson has that and more coming up next. I'm John Jacobson with sports. The Minnesota Basketball Coaches Association All-Star Series brings together 40 of the state's best seniors from the class of 2017 for a weekend featuring dunk and three-point contests and four games, although not much defense on display. Number four, Theo John of Champlain Park, one of the local guys who played. He was on the blue All-Star squad playing in the first game Friday at St. Cloud State. And he gets his game going early on, hitting a long two-pointer on the way to a 20-point game for him. Parker Fox of Montamita had a big game. It's a three there. He had 29 in the game for the Blue All-Stars. Talon Elamin of Hopkins on the green team. He gets the steal and dunk here. He scores 23 in the game. Off a missed shot, Jimmy Volbrecht of Jordan grabs the rebound, sets up Maple Grove's Taiwan Pickford for the lay-in. Pickford scores 18. Elamin open for a three, and he hits. He'll connect on five threes in the game. Blue All-Stars, though, up on the green team at halftime by six. Second half, it's a dunk fest. Pickford passes ahead to Sean Sutherland of Irondale. Slams home two of his game-high 33 points. And then clear the way for Theo John, who flushes home two more. The Blue All-Stars lead expands to 19 points. Devante Saeed L. of Armstrong was also on the green All-Stars. He banks in a three-pointer here. They come up short. The Blue All-Stars win 132 to 112. In the second game at St. Cloud, Mr. Basketball making the right of Champlain Park, leading the Gold All-Stars against the Maroon team. And Wright open early for a three, but his team trailing by eight. Check out this pass from Wright. Ahead to Jamison Bryan of Eastview for the lay-in. And two more for the gold. Gonar Mar of De La Salle led the Islanders to another state championship last month. He gets a steal and dunk here for the Maroon All-Stars. And their team's up by 12 at 38-26. Armstrong's Isaiah Rollins, number nine, comes down the lane and scores two. The Maroon extends its lead up to 16 points. Right left open in the corner hits a three-pointer, which helps fuel a big comeback for the gold team. And then off a missed shot, ball will be tipped out to Hopkins Simon Wright, who puts it up for two. Gold dominated the second half, and they went on to win it big, 131 to 108. In the Saturday games at McAllister College in St. Paul, the Blue All-Stars won the championship, beating the gold 141 to 127. Sean Sutherland of Irondale had the blue with 31 points. Tawan Pickford at 29 as well in that game. In the third place game, the Rune beat Green 130 to 124. Gornar Marr of Salle hitting for 36 points in that one. Well, hockey all-stars also hit the ice over the weekend. The Ted Brill Great Eight Festival had a new format this season with teams of seniors joined this year for the first time by some high-level juniors. Players competed on teams based on the playoff sections their high school teams are in. Local seniors from sections two and six in Royal Blue. First shot here stopped. The rebound batted over to Eric Evans of Armstrong Cooper. He's number 10. He buries it for a 1-0 lead over section four and five juniors. Second. Period now, Michael Spethman shot deflected. He picks it up again, slides it over the goal line from a tough angle to make it 2 0 Royal Blue. Spethman's from St. Cloud Cathedral. Max Strong shot kicked out, but Jake Van Halbeck will tuck it away for a rebound. And it's a 4 0 lead for the Royal Blue team. Light Blues, Mickey Zeller gets a great chance. He's denied on the breakaway by Nick Whitecheck of Eden Prairie. 
Brex Carter Breitenfeld. Breitenfeld will get in on the fun. He'll score in a breakaway here. The section two and six seniors win it easily. Six nothing and they place fifth. In the third place game. The Kelly Green team facing off with gold. Section seven and eight seniors in gold. Josh McCurry of Northern Lakes scores for a one to nothing lead. Section two and six juniors in the Kelly Green. They answer Jerome Hirschfield. Stopped in close. It's Wyzetta's Griffin Nestler scoring and ties the game at one. Later on, Justin Daly of Delano takes the pass, whistles the shot in, and scores. And that's a 2 1 lead now for the Kelly Green team. We zip ahead to the second. Jesse Jock with taking two defenders with him, and Dylan Johnson scores for Colquet and makes it 5 to 4 gold. And then a nice shot block here leads to a goal for Matt Value of Hermantown. Into the empty net, section seven and eight seniors win at six to four. Now in the championship game, the HP seniors representing sections four and five beat the HP 18s from section seven and eight, five to two. Maple Grove's Jared Camarata had a goal and an assist in his high school teammate, Justin Kelly, had a goal for Team Orange on the way to the win. Matt Jenrich of Centennial had two goals for Team Orange. So almost all the Colors in the color palette on display in those two all-star games. Mike and Alex, back to you. And a lot of fun. All right, thank you. A major chance to declutter. And we will explain when we come right back. And finally, it is time for a little spring cleaning in Brooklyn Center. You may have noticed a lot of stuff placed on the streets and parts of town over the weekend. <laughs> it is time to clean out garages and attics through next Thursday. Every day, trucks will focus on a different part of Brooklyn Center as they pick up bulky waste like old furniture, mattresses, carpet, and even some appliances. Day one it was Monday, started in the northwest section of Brooklyn Center. On Tuesday, pickup is just south of I-94 and Brooklyn Boulevard, and you can call the Recycling Administration at 763-493-8006 to find your pickup day and information about what is being accepted in this pickup. And it's important to know uh, when your pickup day is because they start, you got to have it out there by 7 in the morning, and then uh, they won't come back. The trucks will go through the area once, and they won't come back. So they do, deal. <laughs> they're going to do the whole city in, uh, in about seven days here this week and next and it's a good time for spring cleaning for absolutely all of us. get rid of that stuff <laughs> that's, that's in right. the garage <laughs> that's it for now thanks so much for joining us everyone we will see you back here again tuesday starting at four o'clock